take four quadratic equations and solve them using a graphing calculator. What I'm not going to do in this video, of course, is go into how to factor quadratics or how to use the quadratic formula. I did that in the previous video, and if you want to check that out, I will link to that video in the description. But we're just going to focus on the graphing calculator steps to solve something like this. And what you want to think about is the solutions to these quadratics are where the graph crosses the x-axis. So we're going to look at this quadratic right here, x squared minus x minus 6 equals 0. This is a quadratic equation that crosses the x-axis twice. There are quadratics that don't cross the x-axis at all. There are quadratics that come down and touch the x-axis and then bounce back up. Of course, there are quadratics that have a negative lead coefficient and are flipped over like that. But this one has two answers, and we're going to figure out how to find both of them. So here's what we do. We go to y equals on our calculators, and we're going to type in this function into our y sub 1. So here we go. x squared minus x minus 6. And we usually start with a zoom 6, a zoom standard. All right, zoom 6 is the standard zoom, and that'll give you this look. So we are, like I said, we are looking for where the parabola crosses the x-axis, right there and right there. So let's find this one first. So here's what we want to do. Second, trace. Go down to the second option, which is a zero. That's another word for a solution. Left-hand bound is what it's going to ask you first. So you need to get your cursor to the left of this answer. So right now my cursor is like is down here. It's blinking right there. So let's move it up to somewhere to the left of this answer. So somewhere over here. And if I press left and right, you'll notice that the cursor follows the path of the quadratic. And I think that's pretty good. Press enter. It's going to ask you for a right hand bound. So Click your right arrow until your cursor gets down here somewhere. So you press right a bunch of times, and right there is pretty good. So what we just did there was we provided our calculator a window to look in to find the, uh, the place where the graph crosses the x-axis. In other words, where the y value goes from negative to positive. The third question that the calculator wants to want you to answer is a guess. And that just means get the, the cursor as close as you can get it. Not going to be perfect, but once you press enter, then you're going to see that x equals negative 2 pops up. All right, so there you go. x equals negative 2, y equals 0. And that is your first answer. The second answer, of course, so let me write this down. So this is x equals negative 2. The second answer is right here. So let's repeat those steps. I'm going to go, it's already, my graph is already, my equation rather is already in 2y equals. So I graph it. I press second, trace, go down to the 0. So you can press 2 or you can just press down and enter. If you press 2 for, for the second option, it pulls this straight up. Now we're looking for this other answer right here in blue. So I need to get my cursor to the left of that. So maybe like right in here. So I want to look that way. So let's move. I guess technically I could press enter now. It's to the left of that. But let's do that right there. Now it wants to know a right hand bound. So get your cursor up here somewhere. So I press right a bunch of times until it goes over to the right there. Enter, and then guess, press left again until it gets pretty close. 
and I can see that x equals 3 is another solution. Another word for solution is root or 0. It's the x-intercept of this parabola. It's where it crosses the x-axis. So I have, I have x equals positive 3. Positive 3 and negative 2. And again, if you wanted to solve that using your factoring, you certainly could. x minus 3, x plus 2. Split it up and solve it from there. If you need to know how to factor, go back and watch a different video. And the quadratic formula works for these as well. All right, give this one a shot. So press pause and give it a shot. I'm going to type that into y equals. So I'm going back to my calculator. Clear out what was in there. I'm going to go 5 times x squared. Even though these are m's, it doesn't matter. Don't put m, just put x. Plus 14x minus 3. And graph it. OK, so I need to know the two answers. So I'm going to zoom in on this. I'm going to press zoom 2. Enter. And I can't see the left hand side, so I'm going to change my window a little bit. I'm going to change my x minimum to maybe negative 5. And see if that looks better. So there we go. There's my first answer right there, and my second answer is right there. I need to figure out those x values where y is 0. All right. Uh, and what I actually might do now that I have a really good look at it is zoom back to standard. I decided I didn't really like that first zoom. So here we go, second, trace. Go down to zero, press enter. And I want to find, I'm going for this right here first. So I go to the left of that, press enter. Go to the right of that, press enter. And then guess really close to that. And press enter. I get negative three. The other answer, here we go. Second trace. Go down to zero. Press enter. This time I'm looking for this answer right here where my arrow is. It's the other x-intercept of this quadratic. So left hand bound is, I don't know, right there somewhere. Right hand bound is somewhere to the right of that x-intercept. And then just guess really close. I get 0.2. Well, 0.2 is, of course, 1 over 5. So those are the two values, negative 3 and 1 fifth, that when you plug it in for m, you get 0 on this whole left side. That's why they're called zeros. Next up. This one is not in the right format yet. We need to get all of our terms on one side of the equation or the other. And since there are three terms over here and two over here, I guess I'll move these two over to the left by doing their opposites. So let's go ahead and add 8x squared to both sides. When I do that, these cancel out, and I get 5x squared minus 3x plus 6 equals 8. And let's subtract 8 from both sides. These cancel, become 0. 6 minus 8 is negative 2, minus 3x, and 5x squared. And that's ready to be put into y sub 1. So here we go. Clear it out. 5x squared minus 3x minus 2. Zoom standard. And this looks like a pretty good zoom. I'm going to go ahead and put, hit second trace. Go down to 0. Left hand bound means get it to the left of that. And the first point I'm trying to find is right here. Enter. To the right of that point, press Enter. And really darn close press enter. I get negative 0.4. So x equals negative 0.4, which is 2 over 5. All right, let's do the same steps for this point right here. So I go second 
trace, go down to zero, press enter, left hand bound, I need to be somewhere to the left of this point. So I press enter right there, right hand bound up here, and get it really close right there, one. Negative two fifths and one. All right, now there's a couple other ways you can check that on your calculator. You can go, if you go back to your home screen and you type in second, and now you type in vars for variables, go over to press right where you see y variables, and the first option is function, press enter, press enter again. That'll bring up on your home screen y sub one. So if you press parentheses, positive one and then press enter you'll see that you get a zero and what that does is that syntax right there is your calculator saying okay when you evaluate the function for one you get zero and you can do the same thing All right variables y variables enter enter parentheses negative point four and you get zero if you go to your table as well, you go second window, you go to table set, start your table at zero, and your delta table may be at 0.4, delta table meaning the table changes by that, and you go to second graph, which brings up your table, you can see that when you go to negative four, when x equals negative four, y equals zero. If you go back to table set and you change your, your table to start at zero, and maybe change by one unit. Now press second graph. Your table says when x is one, y is zero. And that's what we're trying to find. Anytime that that y value is zero, that means that the graph is, of course, touching the x-axis. Last one. Try this one on your own. Go to my calculator, I'm going to go really fast here, clear that out, negative 2x squared plus 37x minus 51. If I zoom 6, I notice that it doesn't really look that good. So I'm going to press zoom out. So I'll go to zoom again, go down to the third option, and you got to press enter twice. All right, still doesn't look like much. So maybe I'll zoom out again just to get a better idea. Zoom out, enter. All right, so I'm getting this, the sense that this is a, a parabola that is upside down. And I should know that because of my lead coefficient. So this thing on a graph looks like something like this. So it goes kind of like this. And my answers are right here and right here. So I need to figure those out. So from this zoom, I'll go and change my window a little bit. I need to look in the up and down direction, I think is fine, but let's, if I change my window, my left and right window, which is my x min and x max, I don't know, let's change it to negative 50. And positive 50. Let's see if that changes much. It might not. A little better. If I change my window, my left and right window, to negative 25 and positive 25, that looks pretty good. So I'll keep it right there. All right, so my two answers are going to be right here at the end of my arrow and right here. So let's find this left one first. Second, trace. Go down to zero, press enter left hand bound it needs to be to the left of my arrow the arrow is the answer left hand bound needs to be to the left of that answer press enter it already is right hand bound go up here to the right of that answer press enter guess right there negative 1.5 negative 1.5 I'll put it in fraction form so that's right here negative 1.5 that should be negative all right, this x value right here, let's find that one. Second, second, trace. You can either press the number 2, or you can go down and press Enter. I'll press the number 2 this time. So now I'm looking for this answer. 
So I need to go to the left of that, which is anywhere in here is fine. To the right of that. So I'm pressing right a bunch of times. That's good. And guess, get really close. And there you go. X equals 17. There you go. That one was tricky because the, the window was kind of strange. If I zoom 6 again, it doesn't look very good. So I have to mess with my X and Y minimum and my my y, x and uh, my x min and max and my y min and max to get the good uh, the good view of it. Anyway, there you go. Four examples on how to solve quadratics with our graphing calculators. Thanks for watching.